When a ball is thrown straight up with no air resistance, the acceleration at its highest point, letter A is zero, letter B is upward, letter C is downward, or letter D reverses from downward to upward. Based on Newton's law of acceleration, the direction of acceleration always follows the direction of the net force. With no air resistance, when the ball is thrown vertically upward, the net force is equal to the force of gravity, since the only force acting on the ball throughout its path is gravity, which causes it to accelerate. Since the direction of the gravity is always downward, then at any point of the ball's path, including at the highest position, the acceleration is always downward. Thus, the correct answer is letter C. The acceleration at its highest point is downward. The same force is applied separately to two objects, A and B, which causes the objects to accelerate. Object B has twice the mass of object A. Which of the following is true? Letter A, B's acceleration is half that of A. Letter B, B's acceleration is twice that of A. Letter C, B's acceleration is one-fourth that of A. Or letter D, B's acceleration is four times that of A. According to Newton's second law of motion, acceleration is directly proportional to the net force and inversely proportional to the mass of an object. So if the same force acting on the two objects, then the more massive object will experience less acceleration. Since acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, the bigger the mass, the lesser the acceleration of an object. So if object B has twice the mass of object A, then its acceleration must be half the acceleration of object A. So the correct answer is letter A. This acceleration is half that of A. An object accelerates when it is acted on by letter A, inertia, letter B, velocity, letter C, a balance force, or letter D, an unbalanced force. Acceleration is caused by a net force or an unbalanced force. An object will accelerate only when there is a net force or an unbalanced force acting on an object. If the forces acting on an object are balanced, then there is no acceleration. So the correct answer is letter D, an unbalanced force. An airplane increases its speed at the average rate of 15 meters per second squared. How much time does it take to increase its speed from 100 meters per second to 160 meters per second. Letter A, 17 seconds. Letter B, 0 0.058 second. Letter C, 4 seconds. Or letter D, 0 0.25 second. In the problem, the given R, the acceleration, which is 15 meters per second squared. The initial speed, which is 100 meters per second. And the final speed, which is 160 meters per second. The problem asks for the time it takes to increase its speed from 100 meters per second to 160 meters per second. The equation for acceleration is... Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity all over time.
To compute for time, let's derive the equation. Let's cross multiply acceleration times time equals final velocity minus initial velocity. Next, divide both sides by acceleration. Then cancel out the acceleration in the left side of the equation. That gives us time equals final velocity minus initial velocity all over acceleration. We will use this equation to solve for the time. So let's substitute. Time is equal to final velocity, which is 160 meters per second, minus the magnitude of velocity initial, 100 meters per second, divided by acceleration, 15 meters per second. So let's simplify. Time is equal to 60 meters per second over 15 meters per second. And let's divide. 60 divided by 15, that is equal to 4. Let's cancel out the unit meter. And the second, there's one left S. So the final answer is 4 seconds. Thus, the answer for question number 4 is a letter C, 4 seconds. If an object moves in a straight line with a constant speed, we can conclude that letter A, the object is accelerated. Letter B, there is a net force acting on it. Letter C, the forces acting on it are balanced. Or letter D, all of the above answers are correct. An object moving in a straight line with a constant speed means it is moving with constant velocity. So option A is false. Constant velocity means there is no acceleration. Thus, the object is not accelerated. Zero acceleration also implies that there is no net force acting on the object. So option B is also false. And if there are forces acting on the object, moving with constant velocity, then the forces must be balanced. So the best answer here is letter C. Whereas option letter D, all of the above answers are correct. This is also false because option A and option B are both false. So the correct answer is option C, the forces acting on it are balanced. A tennis ball hits a wall. Which of these statements is true? Letter A, the wall exerts a force greater than the ball's force. Letter B, the wall exerts a force less than the ball's force. Letter C, the wall exerts a force in the same direction as the ball's force. Or letter D, the wall exerts a force in the opposite direction to ball's force. Newton's law of interaction tells us that when the tennis ball hits the wall, the wall exerts an equal and opposite force on the ball. Thus, option A and B are both false because the forces exerted by the ball and the wall are equal in magnitude. Option C is also false because though these forces are equal in magnitude, they are acting in opposite direction. The force of the ball is towards the wall, while the force exerted by the wall is towards the ball. So, option D is correct. The wall exerts a force in the opposite direction to the ball's force. A ball is thrown horizontally from the top of a 95 meter high building with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. What is its horizontal speed after 2 seconds?
This is a kind of a tricky question. So let's illustrate first. The given initial horizontal speed, which is equal to 15 meters per second, whereas the initial vertical velocity is equal to zero since the ball is thrown horizontally. The problem asks for the horizontal speed after two seconds. Remember that for a projectile, the horizontal speed is constant. If there were no gravity, the ball would be moving at constant speed in a straight path. But due to the presence of gravity, the ball curves downward. However, it is only the vertical motion that accelerates downward, whereas the horizontal motion is not affected. Thus, after two seconds, the horizontal speed does not change and is still equals to 15 meters per second. So the answer for number 7 is letter B, 15 meters per second. In which situations are forces operating on an object unbalanced? Letter A, a book rests on a table. B, a car has constant motion of 45 kilometers per hour. Letter C, a ball falls at a faster and faster speed. Or letter D, two sides of a balance. Both support 15 kilograms. You would know if there is an unbalanced force or net force acting on an object if the object accelerates. That is based on Newton's first and second law of motion. It is only option C where the object accelerates. That implies that the forces acting on the ball are not balanced. So the answer for number 8 is letter C. A motorist travels 160 kilometers at 80 kilometers per hour and 160 kilometers at 100 kilometers per hour. What is the average speed of the motorist for this trip? The equation for average speed is average speed is equal to total distance divided by total time. In symbol, that is... Here's the symbol for average speed, symbol for total distance, and for total time. Let's get the total distance traveled by the motorist. In his first trip, he covered 160 kilometers and another 160 kilometers for his second trip. Therefore, his total distance is equal to 320 kilometers. Now, let's get the total time for his trip. In his first trip, the total time is equal to the distance divided by speed. The, the distance for his first trip is equal to 160 kilometers divided by his speed which is 80 kilometers per hour. The answer is 2 hours. In his second trip, the time is equal to distance divided by speed. He covers a distance of 160 kilometers divided by his speed 100 kilometers per hour. That gives us 1.6 hours. Let's now get the total time. During his first trip, he covers 2 hours plus the second trip, 1.6 hours. So the total time for his entire trip is equal to 3.6 hours. We can now compute for his average speed. So average speed is equal to the total distance over total time. His total distance is 320 kilometers divided by the total time 3.6 hours. The answer is equal to 88.9 kilometers per hour. Rounding up 88.9, that gives us the answer is letter B, 89 kilometers per hour. Two forces have magnitudes of 10 newtons 
and 6 newtons. The magnitude of the sum could not be equal to which of the following values? A. 3 newtons, B. 4 newtons, C. 9 newtons, or letter D. 12 newtons. The magnitude of the sum of these two forces is a minimum when they are acting exactly in opposite directions. Since the two forces are acting in opposite direction, we get the difference to get the resultant force. It gives us 4 newtons. So the possible minimum value for these two forces, we have 4 newtons. Whereas the maximum value is when they are acting in the same directions. So we will add 10 newtons plus 6 newtons, so the possible maximum value is 16 newtons. Then any value between 4 newtons and 16 newtons is possible resultant force, but not lower than 4 newtons and more than 16 newtons. Then the correct answer is letter A, 3 newtons because it is lower than the minimum value which is 4 newtons.